Okay, cool. So Chipsec can read stuff, but can we read stuff? And how do we do that? Well, we learned when we learned to read the fun manuals in Architecture 4001 that Intel specifies in their manuals how to access these memory mapped I.O. registers. So to do that, you always have to identify your particular chipset and then identify a specific data sheet that goes along with it. In my case, I know that this is a Intel Atom processor that uh, this particular development board is, and this is the right data sheet. So if you took Architecture 4001, then you're going to look this up yourself. And if you're taking this as part of something like a workshop, then I'm going to help you find the right data sheet for your particular system. But for this particular system, what it says right at the beginning is these registers are mapped in a host address space. The address offsets are relative to spy bar zero. See section 24.2. So we need to find spy bar zero first, find where that is in memory mapped IO space to understand where these offset zero, offset four, offset eight, etc. are. So we go to this section 24.2. We come down here, we see a thing called spy bar zero at offset 10 in this particular PCI configuration address space. Again, we learn about PCI configuration address space in architecture 4001. But what this says is that this is, because it's an Intel internal component, we know that it's PCI bus zero, it's device 13, because it tells us right here, device 13, and function two. So BDF bus device function 0, 13, 2. So once we have that, then we can use this membar thing to find the base address in memory mapped IO where those other registers can be found. So now we're going to use Chipsec's PCI reading capability or PCI configuration address space reading capability to go to bus zero device 13 function to offset 10. And we're going to pull out these bits to figure out what is the address in memory where we can find memory mapped IO. So to do that, we need to use the chipsec util PCI command. And so PCI and then help to figure out what the right format is. Okay, so we could do enumerations and so forth, but we already know the bus device function that we want. So it's PCI read bus zero device 13 function two offset 10. And then how big do we want to read? Well, this is a 32 bit register. So we're going to read four bytes can see that they have mnemonics for the sizes of bytes or dword. So dword would be four bytes. So let's do this. We're going to do a chipsec util PCI read bus zero device 13. So 13 in hex is D. This is expecting everything in hex. So D function two offset hex 10. And we want to read a dword worth of information. So this should ultimately give us this membar field. So it says fed zero 1000 is where we can find this spy bar zero. So starting at memory, quote unquote memory, but really memory mapped IO address fed zero 1000. That's where we can find these other registers like the primary region, flash address, discrete address, etc. Now, unfortunately, this particular data sheet is messed up because you can see that it says starting at offset four, we have this thing that it says is at offset eight. And then there's this other thing at offset eight that starts at offset eight for real. So this offset four thing is actually messed up. And if we you know, click on that, it doesn't actually have it there. So, so unfortunately, we need to go look at a different uh, data sheet that is similar enough that it should behave the same way. So, this is now a 200 series chipset. It's just something that I grabbed randomly. Uh, so you can see here at offset four, it has this thing that it calls hardware sequencing flash status and control register. You can see the default value is 2000, just like in this other one. So 2000, so that seems to all jive. So we're going to need to use this thing's definition of that register. So the registers that matter here, like just at a high level, the registers that matter are these flash data registers starting at offset 10. These are where you're going to get data back out of the flash chip. So when you issue a read transaction, it's going to land in, you know, if you read four bytes, it's going to land in the four bytes of flash data zero. And then the next four bytes will land in flash data one and so forth. So flash data registers are important registers because if you're writing data, you would write data there and then you would cause a transaction and stuff would be pulled out of this and sent on the spy bus and written to the flash chip. But we're reading data. So this, all we need to know is that 
if we read data in, it's going to land in these registers. And if we you know, dump this data out of these registers, that will be the data that came from the flash chip. The flash address register holds the actual address, flash linear address where you want to uh, actually read or write from. So this is something you're going to fill in with either the address to read or the address to write. Okay, so that's good. And then the thing that matters the most here is the one that is unfortunately missing from you know the actual data sheet I'm using. That is the hardware sequencing flash status and control register. So this is basically divided. It's these four bytes, or sorry, these um, two bytes are the status values. And these two bytes, at the most significant two bytes, are the actual control bytes. So starting from this fgo, which is the actual like let's go and start a flash transaction, these are the bytes that we need to program in order to manually cause a transaction to occur. And these are the bytes that would normally be checked to you know, know whether or not a transaction is done or whether there's a cycle in progress. And so we should be checking these before we do a flash transaction if we don't want to screw things up. But we're just going to you know, risk it and take a chance and read because we're not worried about you know, reading isn't going to cause a problem. I mean, it could because something somewhere could be trying to read you know, a uh, NVRAM, uh, NVRAM variable behind the scenes like Windows operating system might try to read it and then we clobber it with our data. So it's totally unsafe what I'm doing, but I'm going to do it anyways because I don't care about this system. We need to program these upper 16 bits. And so now we need to figure out, you know, what we need to program them with. So I'm going to have a little cheat sheet here to help me figure out what I need to write. So we've got bit 31. So I'm going to, I'm going to put like A, B, C, D, E for some bits. And then I'm going to put a particular uh, value for each of these. So uh, bit 31 is the FSMIE bit, which we learn in Architecture 4001, is a nice little bit that every time a flash transaction occurs, it causes a system management interrupt. And this is a great way for an attacker who's compromised system management mode to man in the middle of flash transactions. And someone recently actually, you know, wrote a weaponized version of that proof of concept thing I made for that a long time ago. But we don't want that to occur right now. It's not going to be useful in any way. So we are going to set bit 31 to zero. Then bit 30 is reserved. So we're going to put that as zero. And then we've got 24 to 29. So this is inclusive. So 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. And that is six bits. So going to write six bits right there. And this is the number of bytes that we want to actually read or write. So we're reading here. And it says that the value here is effectively the value of this field plus one. So if it was 3f, that would be 63. But plus one means it's going to transfer 64 bytes. So whatever we put here, so if we put, you know, all ones like that, that would be f and that would be three, right? So that would be a 64 byte read. So we're going to start with just a 16 byte read. So we're going to set that like that. And so that's 15 plus one is 16 bytes that are going to be read. Next, we have bits 22 and 23. So two bits that are reserved and they should be zero. So let's set those to zero. Then we have write enable type. And, you know, this may or may not be actually accurate to our other thing, but we're not going to care about this. We're just going to set it to zero. So single bit of zero there. And then flash cycle. This is a interesting number of bits because this is going to say what kind of flash operation is going to occur. Is it a read operation? Is it a write operation? Is it an erase? So we want a read. So that's nice and easy. We just need to set the flash cycle to zero. So how many bits is it? Well, it's 17, 18, 19, 20. So it's four bits and we want to set them all to zero in order to cause a read. If we set it to one, then it would cause, sorry, two, we would cause a write, but we don't want that. And then finally, we have this flash cycle go bit, and this is the one that actually causes a flash transaction to occur. So we want to set that EFG. We want to set that to one to cause our transaction to occur. All right, so what is this binary in hexadecimal? Well, 00040 is zero. 
four ones is F, four zeros is zero, and zero, 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 one is one. So that is hex zero F zero one. Okay, so that is the value that we need to write at offset six because this overall register starts at offset four, but that offset four would be down here. So we need to skip one, two bytes forward, write two bytes starting here at offset six. So offset six from the base address that we figured out for memory mapped IO, which is fed one zero, uh, fed zero, 1000. So in terms of registers that we need, we have, you know, spy, spy bar zero equals x fed zero, 1000. The flash status and control register so we're just going to call it, you know, F control, although that's not accurate, is that hex fed 01006, and we want to do two bytes, and then the flash address register is going to be the other important register, right? So we need to set the address that we want to read from. So that is at offset 8. So offset eight should be the address. So we're going to set that equal to hex 10 so that we can read from that magic signature at offset 10. So hex fed zero one zero one zero. the address and that's four bytes and we want to set that equal to x10 and we want to set that control register equal to hex 0f what is it again 0f01 all right so we'll shrink it down so we can see it all okay so this is what we have in order to cause a manual memory mapped io flash transaction we only have the following things we need to set the flash address at this memory mapped address to 10, and then we set this value at fed0 1006, and that will say we want to do a read transaction, these bits for a read transaction, this bit to go, and these bits to say what the size is, so 15 plus 1, so a 16-bit read. Okay, so let's see if we can go ahead and do a manual write of these values and cause a flash transaction that is sane. So before that, let's go ahead and do a, um, a chipsec command in order to uh, get rid of the uh, values that are currently there so that we don't, uh, so that we can confirm that we've actually overwritten them. So instead, let's do a spy flash read from address zero of 16 bits, uh, 16 bytes rather. So we're gonna read flash address zero, right? Flash address zero, and we're reading 16 bytes. So let's look at our test.bin. Okay, all Fs exactly like we would expect because offset zero has 16 bytes of Fs. So now let's do our transaction. So now we need to actually be doing memory mapped IO. And while there is a dedicated command for memory mapped IO in chipsec, it's for if it you know knows the base address for like a bar like spy bar, but uh, that doesn't work on this particular system. So that's why I have to use you know the manual addresses. So I need to go to chipsec util, and now I just want to use the memory command. I just want to figure out how do I read and write from memory, which will in fact be memory mapped IO. So memory help. And the form is chipsec util mem read, a physical address, a length, and a value, or a file. So file when we're reading to a file, and value when we're writing to it. So I'm going to use this write value form here, and I'm going to write this value, so adjusting that slightly. So I'm going to write 0f, so first I need to write the address into the f adder, and then I will write this because this will cause it to go. So I'm going to do chipsec util mem write val physical address is hex fed 0, 1, 0, 1, 0.
and then the length is going to be four bytes. And I guess in this form, I need to give it as D word instead of four. And then I need a specific value that I'm going to write, which is going to be hex 10. So this is the flash address that I want to read from. All right, so I write that value. And then I'm going to write the value 0 f 0 1 to offset 6. So change this to offset 6, change this from a D word to a word, and change this to 0 f 0 1. And in a classic simple mistake, I messed up the address of the flash address field. So that's out of set 8, not offset 10. So therefore, let's go ahead and fix that, right? That should be 0, 8, and now this should work instead. So that's why one has to be careful with doing manual memory mapped I.O. All right, so I wrote that. Now I'm going to write my flash go. And I want to see that that actually gets caught over here. So I'll do it again. And you can see it triggered correctly this time. And it did a fast read at address 10 with the dummy cycles and 5AA5F00F. So successfully caused a flash transaction to occur. And now we know that, you know, behind the scenes, the Intel system is uh, doing a fast read uh, when you poke that memory mapped I.O. in order to cause a read. So this is basically what we wanted to show in the Architecture 4001 class. You know, we learn about these flash data registers and we just treat them as a black box. You know, we just say, you know, set some particular thing in the control register, set some particular thing in the data register, and that will all lead to it doing a flash transaction, and we just treat it black box. Now you can see behind the scenes when you, you know, write into these things, it will actually cause flash transactions that you can sniff with a logic analyzer and see how the system is actually behaving. So at this point, now you could start to do things like software sequencing, which is something we don't cover at all in the Architecture 4001. We just say it exists and hand wave past it. So the Intel systems have the notion of hardware sequencing or software sequencing. And hardware sequencing is where you just use these exactly as is and you poke them and you let the hardware figure out, you know, hardware sequencing, what kind of flash command it's going to send behind the scenes. But there's also the notion of software sequencing where it will actually send exactly the type of flash command that you want when you want uh, more control over things. Well, there you go. I hope that we've uh, demystified and gone below this memory mapped I.O.